you're going to connect the 1530 uh, up to the feed line of the RO. Now all these reverse osmosis systems have 3 8 feed line. The BP1530 also has a 3 8 ports. So uh, it's directional. They're on the head of the pump, you'll see there's arrows showing the flow direction. So the input is, if you're facing down on the pump, reading the label, the input's on the right, and then the output is on the left, and you'll see the arrows moving across the pump head like so. So pull out the yellow safety caps, and you're going to install the, uh, uh, the pump like this. Now this pump can be screwed to the wall, it has some rubber feet on the bottom. Uh, you could mount it to a wall next to the RO filter. You can see the input is on the right facing and out the left, and that will go into the RO unit right here, just like that. That's how the 1530 will plumb in. So for this example, I'm going to plumb it into a GX400. I'm simply going to take my incoming water supply, plumb it into a BP1530, and I'll take the input to a GX400 and plumb the output of the BP1530 to it, like that. The BP1530 comes pre-wired with a pressure switch on it. Now the pressure switch is going to go on the permeate line. That's the RO output line. On almost all our, uh, all our water filters, it's going to be uh, the white line that goes through the ASV right here. The pressure switch gets installed in any direction. It's bi-directional. And it gets installed right on this line. Okay. Now, it's advised to install it close to, if you're going to use this with a float valve, install the switch as, as close to the valve as you can, or at least till you run out of wire. So here we have our mini storage tank with a float valve in it, right here, plumbed to the output of a GX400. That's plumbed to the bottom of the ASV right there. Now what I'm going to do is cut the line, and I'm going to hook up the pressure switch that's on the wiring harness of a BP1530. So all that's left to do is turn my feed water supply on to my RO unit and plug the pump in. And I'm going to do that right now. Now I can see my GX400 is running and my tank is filling. Okay. If I look on the gauges on my GX400, I'm running about 54 PSI. I know that my water here is about 78 to 80 degrees today. And I know that because I checked it earlier with one of these really handy little Myron TDS pens that can check temperature as well as parts per million TDS. So I follow this particular line, which is the EX GX400 at 77 degrees. I go up from 55 PSI, 54 PSI, and look over, and I should be flowing about 330 gallons a day. Okay, so if I measure the output of this unit, uh, guaranteed I'll be about 330, 340 gallons per day. Now, if I was running this unit at 80 psi, I'd be producing 460 gallons a day. So this is a GX400, specced at 400 gallons a day. But with water as warm as 77 degrees, and my pressure up to 80 psi, I can be putting over 450 gallons a day. Let me show you how to do that. So now that the BP1530 is plumbed in, I'm going to plug it in, fire it up, it's going to start running. Now, here is the most important fact for the BP1530. This transformer is rated at 2 amps. This BP1530 pump will raise the pressure well over 100 psi on any of these water filters, which is way too high. 80 is the federal limit on input water pressure on these water filters, the plastic housings. So uh, the problem is after 80 psi, this pump is going to pull more than 2 amps from this transformer and you will burn the transformer out. It won't cause any damage to the pump itself, 
but you will undoubtedly burn out this transformer. I always know when somebody sends back a BP-1530 and they say it doesn't work anymore, 9.9 uh, 9 .9 times out of 10, it's because they ran it over 80 PSI and burnt the transformer up. And really all they need is a new transformer uh, and to review the manual uh, and not putting, the t not putting the pressure up so high. So, that's what this little wrench is for. And it fits into the head of a 1530 just like so. Now, when I turn this pump on, uh, the pressure will probably be low and I can raise it up to the, where I want it to be. And we're gonna show how that works. Now I turn the Allen screw clockwise. I like to keep it in a safe margin uh, around 75 PSI, 70 to 75. That's because as this membrane starts to clog up as it goes through its life, there's gonna be more back pressure against this. And you wanna leave a little headroom uh, for a pressure raising uh, while this thing's in service. What you don't want to happen is you set this thing to 80 PSI, which is the max it can handle, the transformer, and then the RO starts to clog and the pressure raises up to 110, that's when you blow a transformer. So you need a little headroom on your pressure, you know, 70, 75 is a good sweet spot. If you're going to plumb it up to 80 PSI, you just better make sure you watch it periodically that the pressure doesn't raise so that you back it down as the membrane starts to scale up. So I'm going to set it at 75 PSI. That's a nice safe place. Now we're making tons of water, uh, about 450 gallons a day out of a GX400. Pretty impressive. Let me show you how the high pressure cutoff works on a BP1530 pump. When the pressure raises in the permeate line because the float valve closes, it trips this switch and it cuts the current off to the pump. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to artificially raise the float valve and this pressure switch responded in about a second. So when your reservoir fills, your float valve kicks and the power is cut to the pump. So it works hand in hand with the float valve, really cool. If you had a ball valve on the end of this line, you could just shut it and this would shut off as well so you don't have to keep unplugging it.